I'm John Cunningham, founder of Stumpworks. We've created a revolutionary new prosthetic arm with a dynamic volume, breathable textile socket. Before I explain that, I want to tell you what it isn't and how that led us to this design. First, it isn't about this hook. Patented in 1912, the Dorrance hook remains the most used prosthetic terminal device in the world, used by 90% of the arm amputees who use a prosthesis. But the first time I saw one, shown to me by a prosthetist explaining my probable path in rehab, I dismissed it and said I was going to Walter Reed to get a high-tech bionic arm, wiggling my fingers like this. Have you ever seen one, he asked. In 2004, I was a biomedical engineering grad student working on atomic force microscope control. My Marine Reserve unit was activated in the summer of 2004, and on New Year's Day of 2005, I lost my right arm below the elbow in an IED attack. Which brings us to the second thing our arm is not, a bionic arm. Well, I did get a myoelectric arm at Walter Reed, wearing it for weeks before I tried that hook, and even ended up being an engineer and the first test pilot of the DARPA arm, I've never wanted one and they haven't become commercially available in any case. Thought controlled arms as good as the real thing have been just around the corner since 1965. While I was working on the DARPA project, I was also one of the founders of the Open Prosthetics Project, which created the first functional 3D printed prosthetic device, this Troutman hook in 2007 printed in metal. Well, our frame, the forearm, is 3D printed, and it's that that makes it possible. The third thing our arm is not is filament printed on a consumer printer, nor is it superhero themed, designed by a precocious high school student, or producible for $200. So what does make it cool, and why is it revolutionary? It turns out that nine of the top 10 reasons that half of arm amputees don't even wear an arm are related to fit and comfort, which means the socket. Current prosthetic sockets are uncomfortable at best and painful and injury inducing at worst. That's my arm after a few hours of welding. Just 10 minutes of mountain biking is enough to fill a silicone sleeve with sweat. Weight, poor heat and moisture management, pain and pressure pretty much sum up the problems with traditional sockets. And it's no surprise when you realize that they are basically Dutch wooden shoes with rubber socks. Our potential customers are either unhappy with one of those sockets or don't even wear an arm because of them. Their pain point is literally that socket or some particular place inside it. Function is actually the number two complaint, which explains that hook. Another functional complaint is range of motion. Hard sockets can restrict half or more of anatomical range of motion because traditional sockets cannot stretch or change shape like the arm does. Take a look at how much the surface of the arm changes when it moves. If these tissue changes are inhibited in any way, range of motion is restricted. At the same time though, if parts of the socket stretch too much, the socket won't stay on and it won't translate motion to the prosthesis. So we set out to make a prosthetic socket unlike any that has been made before, addressing those complaints that lead arm amputees to hate wearing sockets or to not wear them at all. Rather than start from scratch, we wanted to look to a more developed industry for inspiration. Athletic shoes. This multi-billion dollar market has evolved in astounding ways since the advent of composite sockets in the late 1940s, during which time composite sockets have stayed recognizably the same. Starting with fabric, we added just what we needed to create a firm connection between the frame and the arm inside the socket. Just as the shank and heel counter secure your foot to the sole of a shoe, our elbow and forearm counters stiffly engage with the user's residual limb, and the interface pads cushion the pressure and secure the bony prominences of the arm to the prosthesis. One of the first things we understood is that for a below elbow amputee, the most secure suspension is from above the elbow. This is why hard sockets restrict motion so much, because the only elbow movement they allow is when the socket doesn't fit perfectly 
and slips or the arm moves in the socket. We've addressed the problem of having to compromise between the security of suspension and range of motion with two reel and lace systems that adjust to the arm throughout the range of motion. One tightens as the arm extends and volume moves away from the elbow, and the other stays snug by allowing the elbow counter to rotate on two pairs of hinges as the elbow flexes. In order to securely connect our socket above and below the elbow while allowing motion, we have a system of flexible hinges that maintain a close connection throughout motion, balancing all of the ways the arm changes shape. By maintaining flexibility where we need it, eliminating it where we don't, and maintaining wicking and breathability, we've created an arm that will stay on for activities that require all of these things like cross-country skiing, rock climbing, biking, lifting, and even rowing. After hundreds of prototypes and multiple generations of designs, we've created something that does a better job of solving those top 10 complaints from arm amputees than anything we've seen. We've fitted this arm to a second patient at the VA in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who saw similar improvements in range of motion and comfort. We know that we can even further improve this technology. We have grant applications pending with the NSF and the VA and intend to launch a crowdfunding campaign next year to connect with patients and their prosthetists who want to help complete development and bring this arm to market. Please contact us at info at stumpworks.com if you would be interested in trying the Stumpworks arm or are interested in partnering with us.